Hello fungi and welcome to the first channel about fungi. Today I would like to talk about some morphological forms of lichens. Lichens exhibit different morphology forms primarily as an adaptation to their environmental conditions and ecological niches. These various forms help lichens to succeed in a wide range of habitats and ecological roles. Here are some reasons why lichens have different morphology of the body. Substrate specificity, availability of moisture and light, competition for space and resources, and defense against herbivores and grazers. Usually, you may find information about three main types of lichens – crustals, folios, and fruticals, but of course, there are many more, and I decided to show you some additional morphological forms of lichens with regard to their internal structure. Crustal lichens are a type of lichen characterized by their tightly attached crust-like appearance on surfaces such as rocks, bark, and soil. They are often flat and closely adhering to the surface. Crustal lichens lack of lower cortex and they are attached to the substrate by the hyphae of the medulla. It makes contact so intimate that they are practically inseparable from the substrate. Crustal lichens are often found in harsh and challenging environments such as deserts and high-altitude regions, where their low profile helps protect them from harsh weather conditions. A leprous lichen is typically considered to be a form of crustose lichen. Unlike crustose lichens, which have defined layers in the body organization, talus of leprous lichens is undifferentiated and looks like a regular mix of fungal hyphae and scattered photobiont cells lacking a cortex or any organized structure. Morphologically, it's the simplest growth form. This type of lichens characterized by their powdery or granular appearance. They look like small grains or tiny flakes and are often found growing on the surfaces like rocks, bark, and soil. Folios lichens have leafy or lobed structures. They are loosely attached to the substrate, such as rocks, bark, or tree branches. Leaf-like lobes can vary in size and shape depending on the species and often can be lifted off the substrate. This type of lichens has multi-layered organization of the talus, protective upper cortex, photobiont layer, medulla, which consists of fungal hyphae, and lower cortex with structure for attachment called rhizons. Fruticals lichens composed of hair-like, bushy or shrubby lobes that may be flattened or cylindrical. Their bushy form is attached to the substrate only at the base of the lichen. Fruticals lichens always stand upright from their substrate substrate. Branching patterns of lobes and overall size varies greatly among different groups of fruticals lichens, with some species growing several meters in length. Regarding the inner structure, a single dense cortex envelops the entire talus, and there is no distinct upper and lower cortex. A continuous algal layer grows around the circumference of the branches of the lichen. Next layer is a medulla and a hollow center or a dense center cord. Fruticose lichens are found in many different types of climates, from deserts to rainforests. Scomulus lichens are characterized by their small, scale-like tali. These tali are typically less than a few centimeters in size and are often overlapping and densely packed together, making structure resembled roof shingles. Scale lichens usually don't have lower cortex and attach to the substrate by hyphae of medulla. This feature makes them similar to crustus lichens. On the other hand, they can be raised from the substrate and appear leafy, resembling folios lichens. If we take all together, it looks like squamulus lichens are intermediate between crustus and folios lichens. Gelatinous lichens have a gelatinous or jelly-like texture and can be found on various substrate including soil and rocks. These lichens don't have organized structure, very similar to leprous lichens. But unlike leprous lichens, which combine microbiont and mostly algal cells as photobiont, gelatinous lichens usually consist of cyanobacteria and fungal partner. Cyanobacteria give the lichen a dark green, brown or black colors. Gelatinous lichens are common in places with irregular rainfall or occasional flooding like rock pools. Cyanobacteria help to absorb lots of water by lichen body. This lets lichens stay hydrated 
and continue photosynthesis process long after the wet period ends. And the last morphological type is filamentous lichens. Filamentous lichens have a filament-like or stringy appearance and are often found on soil and different organic materials. Unlike most of the other morphological forms, a filamentous lichen's morphology is determined by its algal partner rather than its fungal partner. A thin layer of fungal hyphae surrounds an algal chain, resulting in a thread-like or hair-like structure. Because of their high surface-to-mass ratio, they can quickly absorb moisture, enabling them to take advantage of even short periods of high humidity, such as fog or dew. Lichenologists tend to consider filamentous lichens to be a type of fruticose lichens. This is an uncommon growth form found in only a handful of genera.